at Kyle Jolie O. Who has the most legitimate chance, Shireen, to win the NFC East? A question I posed to you while you have a Cowboys jersey hanging over your shoulder. <laughs> Does it matter, Mike? That would be my question. <laughs> I mean, these are four teams with three wins each, and I meant to look up what their record was. Somebody mentioned it yesterday. Their record was outside the division, but let's just say it's not very good. Probably going to be the worst in NFL history. They can't win outside the division, but the Cowboys did do that yesterday, and because they did that and looking at their schedule, I think they can win most of the games left on their schedule. This is the team I expected to see, the Cowboys this year, obviously with a different quarterback. But Andy Dalton looked good, and they played. They have played really well in the last two games, lost to Pittsburgh and lost game, in a close game when they didn't have Andy Dalton. So I'm going to say the Cowboys, just based on their schedule, you know, Washington is the key game, obviously, on Thanksgiving. That's for first place. If they can win that one, Every team, they're going to be favored or right in, right there with the other teams, including Baltimore, which you would have said a few weeks ago was going to be a heavy favorite over the Cowboys. Rocketing around somewhere in my brain is the number 226 and one, the NFC East record outside of the division going into last week. If that's true, and there's a very good chance it's not, they've doubled their wins to four 26 and one, with Washington beating Cincinnati and Dallas beating. Minnesota. So they're on their way. And look, I'm going to give into recency bias here because when you only have three wins each for the entire season, winning yesterday <laughs> means something. And I think whoever wins on Thursday night is going to have a shine about them and they're going to become the consensus favorites to keep it up over the final five weeks of the season at leapers 500 how do you evaluate drew lock this early into his career he hasn't even started a full season worth of games but he seems to have regressed why does vic fangio have this job will denver ever improve without an owner let me start there shireen because here's the problem in denver there are two problems the first problem is john elway has not done a good job of hiring coaches or finding quarterbacks peyton manning fell into his lap that we're both Hall of Fame quarterbacks thing helped the connection established back in 2012. But Elway has not been good at hiring coaches and finding quarterbacks. He stays in his job, though, because we don't know who the next owner of the Broncos will be. And one thing I pointed out over the weekend that got some traction locally, but we need to be paying attention to it nationally. The NFL is going to insist that one person eventually have full power over that franchise. And it's going to be hard to get all of the Boland children on the same page to give one of their siblings full power. They're not going to sign off potentially. They may have to sell the team. And I think until there is one owner, whoever it is, we're going to continue to have this process of lather, rinse, repeat. Coach, quarterback, coach, quarterback, John Elway always there. And until another Peyton Manning comes along, this team is going to continue to struggle. Yeah, it's almost like Elway needs to see that the quarterback has succeeded elsewhere to have him come to Denver and be successful. He can't draft him. He can't sign him. And, and Drew Locke, it, injuries and turnovers have just plagued him over two years. And when you look at his passer rating and, and, and where he is, I mean, he's ahead of, of Darnold, Sam Darnold. So he has not been good this year. He was much better last season when he ended the season, but he had all those injuries early that, that kept him out. Uh, and now they are where they are again going, is he the quarterback of the future? And I think there's still a huge question there with Drew Locke. Yeah, absolutely. I had a lot of faith in him, but you have to stay healthy, and he hasn't, and that's rule number one. Lamar Jackson has stayed healthy, but he hasn't been effective. Matt Yvon asks, given how Lamar Jackson has periodically struggled this year, should the Ravens wait to extend his contract until after the 2021 season, or should they re-sign him this off season? Look, it all depends on what they think of him, Shireen, but it would be a great opportunity to buy low if they decide to approach him. Remember, he has no agent, which makes it easier, frankly, to sign him than if he did have an agent. Do it now while he's kind of softened up than if he's riding a huge season and may want more. So it all depends on how they view him as a long-term option. But they may be at that. The one good thing, if this season ends up being a disaster, they may be able to re-sign him to a second contract for a lot less.
Yeah, and that's the key thing, Mike. How do they feel about him? I mean, he looked so good last year, but even the passing numbers weren't great. He looked good because he did things on the fly and made plays with his feet and outside the pocket. And he's not doing those same things this season. He's still good with his feet, but he's not doing it in the passing game. And this is a team that is terrible passing the football. And if they don't get any better, you have to wonder how they truly feel about him. Is he their quarterback moving forward? Think about to Joe Flacco, right? They gave him the big deal, and it turned out that he wasn't the guy that they thought he was in the Super Bowl year. He did it the one year, but that appeared to be an aberration. And maybe last year was an aberration for Lamar Jackson, too. Yeah, I think unless they can get him to a great deal after this season, you wait and see what he does in 2021. All right, tonight the Tampa Bay Buccaneers seven and three, hosting the Rams six and three. But the Bucks are one and two, and easily could be zero and three in prime time. Bruce Arians moved practices tonight this week. There were some comments from Tom Brady on Friday that if you read between the lines, it's kind of like, hey, it's on us as professional football players to show up and play wherever and whenever. It doesn't matter that it's at night. We have to be ready to go. Period. Will they be ready to go tonight, Shereen? Well, they better be ready to go because I tell you what, Mike, we had a, a question we didn't get to on Friday from the PFT PM Posse, and that question was, who do you think is the most underrated team in the league? And I think it's the Los Angeles Rams. They are now t number one in total defense. This defense is really, really good, and we might as well just go ahead and give that defensive player of the award to Aaron Donald and maybe rename it in his honor, too. This is a good <laughs> defense, and I think 48's the over-under. Take the under. Yeah, and how do you put pressure on Tom Brady? When it comes around the edge, he is very adept at moving forward quickly. There was a moment earlier this year where it was almost a Madden glitch how quickly he moved forward when the pocket was starting to collapse around the outside. But when you can bring the heat up the middle, that's when you can beat Tom Brady. He starts looking down at the pass rush instead of down the field and if Aaron Donald is wreaking havoc it's going to be a long night for him in the pocket I think the Rams are going to win I think they're going to win which probably means that the I Buccaneers will Shereen who do you have tonight Rams <laughs> yeah Rams I have the Rams the under, as well and I'm with you we probably just jinx the Rams well, look, and who knows this year? And I like that. I don't like the fact that we're expected to know what we're doing because the reality is nobody knows. And that's when <laughs> football is at its most exciting. Nobody really knows. That's why they play the games. They'll be playing that game tonight in Tampa Bay. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.